Nothing is wasted in an infinite universe. Come on, people. Let's get this straight. Hello and welcome to freedomslips.com. Revolution Radio. <laughs> and it is Monday. It is a day that we are going to try. Now we're going to succeed in just making things a little more easier. Setting an answer like, you know, we're calling for donations. Yes, indeedy. And we have the Jumbo Pack, $100. And then guess what? There's a little extra token that comes along. Well, it's actually a silver bar. It's not a token. And I think um, there was a $75 one that you get a hat. Uh, Just go to the homepage. Check this stuff out. Our Mr. Nighthawk is all kinds of different um, things to help stimulate that we're here. The shop is excellent. Go down to the shopping click in the right hand bottom of the home page because they now have doggy shirts with the revolution radio it's just so cute (laughs) so you can even get your pets involved because we is here evolving through this revolution with everything that's going on people are feeling all different kinds of sorts or out of sorts and we're here to try to help at least communicate through ourselves to make us feel better and hopefully others will join in and it is Mosin Monday hello Mosin hello my dear how are you doing Uh, I'm looking for my birthday being a full moon in Scorpio I'm gonna have a heck of a Saturday oh Saturday's your birthday yeah Tauruses come on I'm covered with Tauruses I got Tauruses all over and around me (laughs) Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Oh yeah, uh, we got actually, days to go. Uh huh. Mine, mine is coming pretty soon too, actually. Yeah, what day is that? Thirteenth. Oh, yeah. he's a four baby. <laughs> <laughs> What's a four baby? It's numerology. Oh. Okay. So oh, if see, you're yeah. the thirteenth, then you're a four, and then you're a two, and then you're a one. I mean, you know, it just oh, depends. Yeah. It's so funny. Uh, <laughs> A lot of Adding, people follow that dil- diligently where they live off the numerical systems. And I can see playing with it every now and then. And I do respect the I Ching. I just believe everything is pi. <laughs> well, you know, pi. P-I? The, mm-hmm. Right, right, right. That's, that's the actually, um, uh, that's the Fibonacci. That's the... Mm-hmm. the the, you know the uh, system the of the pattern of the mathematicians of the basis of the elements that holds this thing we call life together. <laughs> right, and that's the energy <laughs> that uh, you know just uh, stems from from the center and 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 goes on and on in loops, you know, and and uh, you know it forms the Fibonacci sort mm-hmm. of a pi. But that's only flat. Now, if we consider it in dimensional view, you come up with a sunflower or you come up with some of those cool looking vegetables that are just so symmetrically art. Right, right, right. right. And um, people don't always get the drift that there's more than one perspective of any point. Mm-hmm. And that's where the Fibonacci series starts, is at a central one point. Now, I don't know that if we've gotten evidence to see if that's... It, to me, it would have to be a circle like the egg of life. But there's still a square in that circle. We cannot get away from the straight lines, but life is not just straight lines. Well, if you take a look at what you said about the plants, and I think I've got slide that I put up uh, one time on one of my Facebook uh, either groups or pages and and that is that's how the life originates from and it originates in, you know from one point but it goes different ways and that's why you've got all these varieties of beautiful flowers and vegetables and and all this stuff which is a testimony of uh, life itself you know mm-hmm so yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Actually, you've been very good today. First of all, you said the I'm a four baby. That's a one plus three, so that's a Fibonacci. And now you're telling me about the you know the flowers and vegetables that basically brings up uh, symmetrically. It's a harmonic part of life. It's uh-huh. beautiful. I mean, to me, 
to me. <laughs> right, right. Well, to a lot of people, too, as you said. That, well, first of all, the whole cosmos is actually run uh, through a you know series of sacred geometry mm-hmm. and numbers and all that. I mean, if you want to go ahead and take a look at the Metatron Cube and the variety of different Metatron geometries that... You know that uh, you know even even the Star of David. You know all this stuff. I know, and then the humanity turns it into a negative when it's two threes coming into the six as above, so below. And if you go into that for the Merkaba, it's almost like the six six six. It's just us. It's, it's the carbon base of the reality of that structure. Did they come up with the numbers, or are they just originally there? Kind of thing. You know what I mean? Well, what it is, I think light actually brings you the code of life and uh, also has the knowledge of the sacred geometries and everything like that. But I think what happens is that as uh, free will, uh, free will uh, entities, we are privy to interpret and you know, kind of utilize the, ener- the energies the signs that they come in anyway. And in duality, you have you have the both extreme. You know, you go from the negative to positive polarity, and it depends on uh, actually what attracts certain thought energies, okay? Mm-hmm. And then they may get attracted either to the negative or the positive. In fact, uh, I'm glad you brought this up because yesterday I had a, I had a two-hour show on mm-hmm. uh, on light and basically how the light energies, uh, you know, come from sun and they're decimated, uh, decimated to us. And uh, there's one other kind of a revelation that I've had recently is that basically it goes, goes back to matter and time matter conversion in all this uh, charged particles that we have in light, okay, uh, or in the plasma that uh, that uh, you know basically is a is a part of energetics of light, and we have cations which are basically ions that are positive, okay, they've lost electrons, and then you've got uh, an ion which is the ions that actually have more attached electrons. And that's how they come to us. And the the revelation that I had was this: the cations, basically being positive, they're attracted attracted to the negative thought energy, and the anions, which are negative ions, are attracted to positive thought energy. So the bottom line is that you want to keep uh, you know keep away from the cations. And you want to more adhere to anions. And for, from that point of view, you know, uh, what uh, environment, what medium the light brings it in, you know, in terms of uh, ionization ratio is very, very important. Uh, the more anion you have, the higher ratio of anion to cation, uh, the higher uh, consciousness you can have, the better... The better positive thoughts, it's more creationism, it is more frequency, and it is higher higher consciousness and higher dimensional existence. Well, so. it's because you learn to set free, not assuming that you know the true validity of it, because it's all still in um, semi hearsay. <laughs> Yeah, the 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 the, the <clears throat> energy, the information packet, is is there in in within light, okay, and that comes into your aura and it gets distributed to your chakra and through your neural network in your brain, and then you get you get those thought energies. You take all this energy that comes in, that's crystal electric energy, and through that electric impulses which is you know your neurons and synapses and all that stuff you you will you will uh, relate to that you utilize that mm-hmm. and how you utilize that it, it, the, it 
it depends on the driver. A driver is the mind, and the the pilot of the mind is your willpower. You know. Mm-hmm. So basically, your willpower pick, pick, picks and chooses. And if you choose right, you prosper. You know, in in in, in spirituality, in any way. And you know. If you choose wrong, you know you you basically what you do you d- deteriorate your uh, consciousness and yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now that may not be immediately apparent because you can adhere into jealousy, competition, violence, greed. You know even. You know, well, I think somebody called those the seven deadly seven de- deadly sins deadly or sins. something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, the seven deadly sins uh, <laughs> also contain two other things that I don't really pay any attention to. It. One of them is gluttony. Gluttony. Uh huh. Yeah, it's, it's eating too much, or you know. Well, over- Tauruses are known for that, <laughs> except for yeah. me. Well, I'm I'm not an overeater, but like I just- beagles. <laughs> I, just, dogs. <laughs> I, I think it's definitely a disorder, but it is it is not it is not in the same kind it's of It's a state of mind that you think that if you have less it's a loss when sometimes when you have less it's more. You know oh, what I mean? Uh, it's absolutely. The gluttony. Because, yeah. Yeah. No, gluttony from that point of view is good because if you move away from the point of view of just nutrition and and food and anything that's ex- excess mm-hmm. and beyond the essential. Oh, but it's not even that as much as a child who's having um, a birthday party can't share with the gifts that usually kids take home from the birthday party for showing up and giving him a gift or her a gift. You know, the gluttony is, I want it all. No matter what right. it is, it's just me. Instead of sharing the energies you want them all it doesn't matter if it's food sex reading being a professional whatever you know gluttony is like when you stand up in the pedestal and say i am the only right like, right. like that no definitely in <laughs> that in that respect i agree <laughs> with you but uh you know the the general biblical kind of interpretation, gluttony is eating too much. And it's, it really goes back to the time of Romans and, you know, those uh, kind of societies that they thrived on, uh, on non-essential, basically. They had too much sex, they had too much this, too much that. And in fact, right. they, they had these orgies and they had these, these uh, things going on that they would go and 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 vomit okay uh believe yeah uh, believe or anorexic or however it is mm-hmm. yeah. anorexic is when you don't eat at all bulimia is when when you eat too much and then you know mm-hmm. you throw up and eat again because of the disorder <sighs> <laughs> what a waste <laughs> it is it in is. body mind and spirit because we should just feel blessed for what we have, and that's what's been actually allocated out of a lot of people's mindsets. And it's because we've just learned to not appreciate, and that's sad. And exactly right. <laughs> so, from that point of view, you know, gluttony, if you look at it, the more extensive uh, meaning or interpretation of it, which, which you have been talking about also is that it is not just a food or nutrition because I think, again, that has a historical background. That's why, you know, it, it goes back to eating and vomiting and all that stuff and re But basically, it's the voracious appetite for anything. And it's not just food, whether it's sex or all right. it's, it's... Well, right, true. Yeah. But it is saying food here, which is interesting because I see right. things in more than one way. Right. And that's what I told you. I don't, I don't subscribe to the gluttony, per se, because I think it's very limited in you know, food and nutrition and stuff like this. Again, it could be a neurotic behavior, but it's not in the same damaging. This is uh, too funny. 
Because I just went and then Googled it, and it says, okay, what you were saying about the overconsumption of food and drink, and then it says, or wealth items to the point of extravagance or waste. And then in some Christian denominations, it's considered one of the seven deadly sins. Now, I didn't read any of that. That really is funny. And a misplaced desire of food or it's withholding from the needy. Gee, sounds like the elite, doesn't it? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, well, they they just they they're at least trying to give the point of view of what's what's perceived, you know. But I I, I think uh, the whole you know it is it is what we it is what has driven us to slavery actually. This well, that moment. would be all in the root chakra there, Mosin, because that's where the directive comes from. How come nobody's moving their chakras up and getting them all aligned and moving, man? Come on, right. I don't mind a little boogie and hip wiggling, but you know what? There's so much more to life. Oh, yeah, the, the lower <laughs> chakra, the first three chakras are just the basic necessities of the three-dimensional duality. Mm-hmm. You have the, once you start opening your heart chakra, then you're letting in the, you know, the, the love, the, the, you know, hopefully with it some unconditional love and compassion... Right, and that you're really—that's the time that you're really opening yourself up to the, to the divine realms, you know. <clears throat> of course, um, you know, in terms of thought and causal uh, action, uh, it is it is the pineal that that's the gateway. Mm-hmm. But, I, but I think equally, heart chakra is extremely important. So we, you know, we need to get all these chakras lit up one after another, right? And then, even when the seven are fully lit, we have to make sure that the other six chakras come in. Yeah, that's you know? why I like the Kundalini yoga. It does all that, and you get a little bit of a workout, and you're dancing to music. It really shakes it up, but it actually shakes out the cobweb so your body remembers how happy it can be by being able to let it do what it wants and needs to do now i'm not talking about the gluttony part but i'm talking about the part that you respect it you become accountable and the more you do then things around you will happen like that and it just seems to get so much easier I don't want to say sometimes to the boring part, but things can be that easy. Especially right. if we recognize that it's up to us. Like you said, the thought, the intent, the the want of it, you know. Right. And certainly through, uh, you know, just spreading around that positivity and, and love and compassion, it, it certainly creates a different environment and it changes your reality. That's but for you sure. know everybody's going to see those causes in a completely different perspective than a lot of other people. Well, yeah, you of know course. what I mean? Ult- ultimately, <laughs> it goes, yeah, of course, ultimately it goes to the, to the light of consciousness, you know. And it is that light of consciousness that actually ultimately, you know, lights up your chakras more than wiggling about with, uh, you know, the Kundalini, uh, uh, you know. I mean, it certainly helps because if you, if, you, if you sit and if you don't do anything, you know that things, you know, you kind of Get sediment, up. right. Sediment, yeah, and they get concreted, sediment. I mean, it's ultimately. I never sit still, even though I'm sitting. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, ultimately, Mona, it is the interaction of the, you know, ethereal with the physical, which is basically antimatter with matter. Matter being yourself, antimatter is. But we're is, the one that directs the energies of accepting or fighting. And then, you know, people wonder why they're feeling nervous tension and stuff like that. It's because you're accepting the external is what you are instead of you being yourself and letting it create the external. That is quite true. I mean, you are the pilot, pilot of the mind, Mm -hmm. and the mind is the builder, the instigator, 
And uh, <laughs> so uh, basically, you're the boss. You and know? the heart is the one that has the pure intent of direction because sometimes I can't be compassionate because they actually asked for what they got. So if they want to act like that and get to that, I'm not going to feel sorry for anybody, actually. that's no. I do not use the word in my vocabulary to the best of my conscious ability because I will not gather sorrow. But, um, <coughs> we, you, you know, you get stuck. The momentum is stuck to the point where you're not looking to bake create a better kind of like achievement or comfortable part or you know to facilitate change right right well basically if uh you know the less you are exposed to those cations or the the negativities of thoughts or bad energies that could be uh, you know emanating from others, not from you, okay? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And the less that you have, the more you can be actually yourself, your higher self, and you can you can activate the heart chakra, mm -hmm. and then later, later your thymus, actually, and thymus chakra, and then you can, uh, you know, you can, you know, you can exercise that compassion and unconditional love, and it makes it easy. Mm -hmm. Now, the big problem, as you're saying, is is the big challenge, is that in this duality where there is, you know, you see so much bad stuff going on. You see that, you know, you see the hatred, the violence, that even jealousy, competition, you know, greed, memeism, all you know, this I kind of stuff. I couldn't even think of all those words to, to explain that kind of thing because I don't hold on to it to follow it to make it mine. Yeah, honey. Well, the reason I do it because I write a lot of articles, you know, I have to articulate things. I'm not saying I'm unconscious about this stuff. I think you know better than that. But the whole idea is this is not a part of me. That's good. Well, I'm not going to feed into it to the point where it's going to feed off of me. Exactly. I like my energies for me. And if somebody can come along and we can unconditionally love and, you know, not even always compassionately, but it usually is, and just co-manifest peace in the time that we're together. Even well, with the animals, even with my, you know, just myself. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm alone a lot, and that's okay. Well, you like yourself. You say those people, no matter how rich they are in terms of they think money and all that stuff, or this or that, you know, they're they're actually enslaved by their egos and their voracious appetites and all this stuff. And it turns out a lot of those people don't actually like themselves. And the part that they crawl, uh, what is it, they, they, uh, you know, they try so hard to uh, claw at others and all this stuff is because they're not happy. They're, they, they don't, they don't love themselves. They don't, they're not satisfied with themselves. Uh, ultimately, when you're satisfied with yourself and everything, you know, then you're happy, you love yourself, and once you love yourself, you can love everything and Everybody else, mm -hmm. you develop that. You know, if you don't feel good, and that and, and the animal comes around you, you know, you feel different than when 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 you're feeling good and positive and satisfied. Because then you want to caress that animal, and you want to give stroke them, and you want to give them love and affection. And I I find that to myself. You know, with me, it's mostly it, it, it's just uh, it's the engagement of the mind rather than. Uh, you know, self hatred or anything like that. But if I'm concentrating, I'm writing, and if the dog jumps on me. <laughs> but, you know, joy you know? begets joy. And if that dog was used by the universe, it might have had to say, Mosin, get up, take a leak, get something to drink, quit making all this shit so evident that it's draining you and you're not appreciating the love and the life around you. Okay. 
And actually, it may be. <laughs> I, I think you're right. Because... No, no, no. I think you're right from that Time point of view. Time to go out and play, Motion. Come on. Get the ball. Get the ball. <laughs> that's what my son tells me. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's what he tells me. Because this last week, I had an extremely intense week because... I uh, you know created I, it otherwise it wouldn't have been there. Yeah, well I wrote three papers, okay? Cool. Three three brand new papers that for the first time there was you know and and there's a lot of genuine stuff in there. I actually you probably seen it. I think you you probably have seen it by now. The, the, I I only put them up yesterday. The one with the really pretty blue picture. Oh, uh, there's there's one about the sun and the CMEs and solar flare and stuff like this, how they're generated. Oh, I go through so many things, most, and it's amazing. Yeah. I actually have two separate walls, and I exchange back and forth, and oh my gosh. One right. page I use a lot of, the next. So it's episode 5, April 26, 215, The Dawn of Ascension Show on CCN, hosted by Dr. Mos and Paul Safarzi. All right, honey, we'll be back after this Prelude okay, to round two, okay? Ding! All, all right, there. <laughs> well, welcome back to freedomslips.com. Revolution Radio. I should have a little price tag on a hat on. I tell you what, I could make one for these headsets. But anyway, welcome back. We are on Monday, yes. And we are still listener-supported. So that means that we should go to the homepage and find that donate button. Just so we can keep on flapping our lips at you beautiful people out there. Yeah, huh? And so let us... Okay, I have one thing here that I will suggest to you to listen. Because we're all looking for little goodies here and there. Is the wwwleather shop dot biz yes indeedy because they are custom made leather t-shirts ja- or not t-shirts but you know a shirt jackets leather vests anything else that's at the store and if you give the promo code mr2015 you will get 25 dollars off any of those things at that site tell them mona sent you and yes go for it because the chaps are real reasonable i was amazed so any bikers out there, man, I've seen this stuff, and it is excelente. Don't forget to tell them, MR2015. And so, Mosin, we are back. Yes, ma'am. You know we have archives, too, right? Five bucks a month. Don't you think that's pretty reasonable, even though a lot of things seem to... I don't know. How can we really get away with having everything free when you live in an economy of... Uh, that kind of finances, you know? Jeez. Well, it's the game that's played on the planet. I mean, <laughs> True. You know, I, I don't like <clears throat> any kind of price or anything on every, anything that I do. And, you know, the everything is free. Absolutely free. Well, it's all in exchange of something because it's all a give and take. And so that's kind of like, I think, what we're all looking for. It's just fair exchange. Yeah, well, I don't know what I'm taking other than <laughs> it's just, it's a felt feeling of satisfaction that I, you know, I do for God and humanity. Well, that too, but I cannot go get other materials for other things unless I have that dollar to go do it, right? Oh, well, that's true. If you if you depend on the, uh, you know, on your livelihood, then that's certainly you can you need to you know you need to function. But I'm I'm retired and I live on what I've got and uh right so Lucky. I spent all, all my time on this right now and that's really cool though yeah but you know the institute is a different thing once we start the you know where we're planning to put some um uh, you know uh spiritual gatherings oh and- right but that'll be fun because that's part of what's in your heart that you really want to do and when that happens then I know good things come from those kind of things. Oh, actually, you know, I, I'm longing to do that because uh, the radio show and the TV show or writing papers, Facebook, whatever that you do is, although you get you know messages and sometimes you interact with people, it's still kind of uh, sort of isolated, you know. 
And, uh, you know, I would like to, to have the actually live people, audience, and people, who, if I could help, if I could take their hands. And if, uh, you know, a lot of people write to me, or some people at least, and they get into their personal stuff, and I try to help them, you know, as much as I can. But it would be nice to see, first of all, people of the same sort of mentality and mind who are spiritual, who don't, you know, who don't, who, who don't just uh, play this game of uh, duality and on this three-dimensional plane. And that's, that's you know, and, and it's kind of associate with them and visit with them and, and all that, so commune with them. But that's one thing. The other thing is that uh, those people who would need you know, support and help and and whatever I can give them. You know, you can take their hands and actually show that there's a presence in there that, you know. Have it, you thought it, of just like first starting? I mean, I get the energies like Reiki and the intent because when I gave change away to my customers, I always sent unconditional love through that change of a thank you. And they knew mm -hmm. it. And I would look them in the eyes. It wasn't, you know, not personal. I had people coming from around the state to just get their Saturday mo morning Mona hug. I mean, pff, that's where I think most of our service is, is just being ourselves. That there, there doesn't always have to be an outlay of things. It's good that you have stuff you can back up what you're saying. But just you being you and playing ball with the dog is... Is important, if not more important, than what mission you think you have to put yourself into stress to achieve. No, that's my opinion. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, that's actually all, what I'm saying is that uh, what that's what I meant by presence. So they, you know, they can see that there's a person in here that that's a human being that that like them, and they can have the hugs if they want to. You know what I'm saying. And so I'm saying the same thing. I'm saying that doing this work through just Facebook and this and that, it's, you know, after a while, it just gets uh, not totally fulfilling. I mean, I, I oh, feel... Oh, yeah, like, no doubt there, babe. I mean, it's just a tool. Right. <laughs> I mean, come and, on. And Life you know, should be a party, right? And shouldn't we be out there exactly. celebrating it? Exactly. Those are the key I mean, words, party and celebrate. Even but, if you're just going to the grocery <laughs> store for a gallon of milk, it should be an adventure. It, it, not everything in life has to be that chore and that drudgery that we've been taught to make believe that it is. Yeah, and you know, as human beings, we're basically social animals, and we are. I love social, people so, watching. <laughs> yeah, social entities, you know. So it would it it is that it is that commune, uh, communing, if there's such a word, uh, being in yes, commune with, with uh, being in commune with other people. Well, don't you meet? Whether, don't you think that you might be meeting a piece of yourself by meeting those others as well? So it's oh it's, sure, it's like the rays of the yeast for the bread, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think part of the part of the thing is that when I'm working very hard and and there's a phase that you know I at this point I feel like I've got to get these things on a video for people. So at any time, even if I'm gone, they can just watch the videos and get the information exactly you've been doing pretty good keeping up with it man yeah i don't know if you've been watching the videos or not at all i know that you've been in here and there and making comments and stuff but uh you know those videos and two hours and during those two hours actually i am as you said i'm totally myself with the so to speak yeah, I've gotten about 20 minutes into them, and then something else comes up, and then it's, like, completely put somewhere else. Because you and I talk. I get a lot out of our talking because we are personal here. It right, isn't the right. computer. No, but no, no. I do no, share the information because I think it's warranted that people can investigate the alternative reality. Right. Well, that show is is completely different than what we do here. Mm-hmm. Here is conversational, and we just talk from the top of our, uh, you know, head and and all this stuff. There, 
I try to talk about a particular topic and basically not leave anything unsaid. Well, and that's where your education came from, you being the professor, is being able to delegate the conditions and words to provide it. Yeah, but I try to do that, uh, you know, less of the lecture and more of the being a person, you know, telling telling them about things. Mm-hmm. And I've had actually. Is there some, a live chat room when you're doing it? No, at this point, I don't have any interaction. As I said, mm-hmm. I'm trying to get a variety of uh, shows out there with with very specific topics. You know, mm-hmm. this is something that we tried to do at the beginning in your show. You know, we start talking about auric bleeding or auras and stuff like this. And, but there, you know, I, I, I'm trying to do this. And then after that, I'm going to have to see if uh, either bring in guests, you know, uh, because two hours is – and it's nonstop. There's no – there's no Oh, trust pro- me. I used to put on lectures for herbs, so I do know. Yeah, two hours, you know, sitting on a chair and talking. It's a lot of information. So, you know, I would suggest for people who listen to my, you know, shows in there and understand this, that I try to put these as, that they become archives at one time, you know, Mm -hmm. like a book or whatever. Well, that's what the YouTube is. If they just go to your YouTube, they'll find the shows. Right, exactly. And these shows. So give your name out again, spell it clearly so they can write it down. Please. Well, well, my name is Mohsen, M-O-H-S-E-N, Paul, which is P-A-U-L, of course, and then Safarazi, S-A-R-F-A-R-A-Z-I. And I think if they just either do a Google search or YouTube search, and if they put that name, you know, that YouTube is just, just going to stream you know, a bunch of the videos, and as they start looking at one, that it streams more on the right. Right. As you know, as you know YouTube does. You can you can mm-hmm. through the whole thing. And uh, Google also, uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, links in there, dropping them to my Facebook, to papers in WordPress. You can do that on now. your YouTube channel too. Yeah, actually, what I've tried to do right now, I've tried to kind of, kind of connect the two together. Mm-hmm. So I put something on WordPress.com, which will be the outline of the talk, and then the video link is right at the bottom. Mm-hmm. So they can do that, or they can actually on the videos they can go on CCN, you know, con- Conscious Consumer Network. Mm-hmm. And they can go there. Either go to their their YouTube and find my my thing in there, or they can just go to the main, uh, you know, what is it, uh, the main page, and they'll see a picture of mine, and then click on that. It drops them into the Dawn of Ascension. Mm-hmm. They can read about the Dawn of Ascension, and then at the bottom it says. Dawn of Ascension page, right? And, and if they click on that, it'll it'll go to a page that has links to a variety of different pages, and each page is basically one of the shows. Neat. So episode one, episode two, episode three, episode four. So if they click on episode one, it will put them on on a page on WordPress.com again. And that's on CCN side. I have my own, but it's on CCN side. And then they'll see the outline of the show. And then at the bottom, they will see there's a link for the video. They can just watch it right there if they want to. So, I mean, there's there's different ways of getting to, to things. And if they go on my Facebook, mm-hmm. I, as you know, I know that's where you usually go. And they, they I, I, I put a link in there. As soon as I publish a paper... I put a link in there. It 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 shows the abstract and start clicking. They can read more, and then it will put them into the paper, and they can read the paper, you know, or the article. And there's there's 
number of uh, slides. Some of most of these slides are the ones that I've done during the past three years, because the first three years I I just did hundreds and hundreds of I don't know maybe thousands of slides. All that right. I so we got that covered, Mr. Mosen. I got it into the fa or I got the Facebook connection and everything chatted. I, I want to ask a question here. It just for some reason crossed my mind about since we are in Ascension, etc., all those people that just had their lives taken in India and the, um, what was it, the Mount Everest area, isn't that what happened? Right. I right. mean, would that just be like one big group Ascension? Or, I mean, explain to me what you're idea of ascension is because that was just like oh my gosh yeah i don't i don't believe the people that pass away mm -hmm. right now at this stage they ascend okay it, it, it would be very very unusual that any of those ascend uh, ascension usually takes uh, as lord metatron says also it's one heart at a time mm -hmm. and you have to reach a certain degree of spiritual mastery you have to do your cleaning and cleansing you have to abolish your low chakra energies you have to increase your frequency you have to have a theta mind you have to be beyond theta mind in order to be ready to go to ascend okay now wait a minute because I was trying to connect with that word theta mind what kind of mind Theta mind, theta mind, yeah. Uh, that's basically, as we've talked about this, you've got a belt, beta, alpha, theta, delta, okay. and, and gamma. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, those are states of mind. Okay, levels that, of consciousness, right? Uh, they're related to levels of consciousness, but the frequency of consciousness is usually a lot higher. Mm. But the state of mind, you have to, to quieten your state of mind in terms of your physical consciousness. So stopping get, the internal dialogue. Exactly. To mm -hmm. get into the subconscious. Because there is a... There is a ah, so your wait a minute. Hold on. I have no idea what this is. Okay. There we go. Mm. I was collecting your site so I could put it in chat. So that must have been the beginning of your show. Go ahead. I don't know. Sometimes <laughs> things, I I, I get actually uh, kind of uh, surprised because sometimes when I'm going on, some something starts playing in the face in the YouTube, Facebook, whatever, and you don't click on anything. They they're just automated, and then you have to stop it. You know, mm -hmm. that's something that they've done this newly to put on their stuff on you. You know, it's just terrible. But anyway, um, going back to these people, I don't think they ascend that. Uh, you know, you know, m these are the type of people who have agreed or, uh, or or planned not to ascend at this time. Okay, so they they're basically they're gonna reincarnate back somewhere else. They're not, you know, they 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 may even reincarnate back back on Earth, but it's kind of doubtful because uh, right now Earth is basically reserved. For the pre-ascension kind of activities era, okay? People who come in here, especially right now, since 1987, I would say, anybody who's born in here, either they are of the star seed crystal, that sort of uh, stature, that they're coming in here to help the, help the up, upshift the frequency of the entire humanity. Or they're coming in here. Some of them might come in here because they want to get a quick dose of diversity of Earth. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and then they want to just live one term and go away. But uh, it is basically right now it's hard to reincarnate back on Earth. It's, uh, it's very selective. And so these people are probably going to reincarnate on, a, on an Earth on a planet such as Earth, which is a planet of duality, 3D, and there are many of them in the cosmos. It's not the only one, you know. And, uh, you know, if you ascend, okay, actually, if you are supposed to ascend, you're, you're sticking around. And you may have to actually go through a lot of pain 
and suffering in terms of coping with the energetics because your physicality your you see your you're connected to your ethereal mm -hmm. okay? and you have to you have to ascend together you can't just die off and then reappear in the fifth dimension. right you got to take the trinity with you you got you, you got to have the male female and just exactly. human self and all kinds of things connected exactly. well that would be just because we're not okay I see that we wouldn't take it personal because we're etheric beings in physical bodies. To me, death is nothing but a vacation. <laughs> that exactly is. It's an excursion. But I it's. want to make sure. Now, I'm not 100%. I cannot, okay, explain what ascension is because to me, that's just a new age word saying that our vibrations are going to a different kind of harmonic. And that everybody's harmonics are being fluctuated into their cell memories coming alive or back into um, being so we can bring all of it from the earth to also plus raising the vibration, which to me is an, an ascension. Well, the thing... Okay. I know, right? Just one yeah. of those moments, you know? We'll no, right hold there. that thought. I got That's something. right. You'll hold it. I am. <laughs> I'm, yeah, you hold it. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome back. And I am at Freedom Slips homepage. And I am looking. Uh -huh. And if you're not in chat, you're actually missing part of the show because we do put all kinds of information in there. Now, with this Jumbo Seed Emergency Food Survival Seed Pack, the $100 pack, there's tomatoes, bush beans, kidneys, lettuce, broccoli. Oh, my gosh. And we're talking, you know, 500 plus seeds and some, 50 for others. And, I mean, oh, my gosh, also has cilantro, pintos, cauliflower, okra. I mean, anise, basil. I mean, oh, gosh. People get it plus for right now to the end of the month. That means you will also get a silver bar. Uh-huh. And bugging out. Okay. There is also with the seed pack. Let's see. It includes a DVD with 900 documents about bugging out. Clothing repairs, winter, etc. Combat including armor ranger handbook. Oh, that's cool. Communications, Morse code. Whoa, that's really neat. I think that's necessary, like first aid people, you know. And cookbooks, food preservation, outdoor cooking methods, that's cool. Disaster preparedness, gardening, general hunting, hygiene, livestock, medical, power, oh, bio, diesel, solar, light, and heating. Oh, my gosh, this has a whole bunch. This is really way cool. And it says much, much more. So do, do that. There's even a little button there you can push. So... Do us that favor. Go to the homepage of freedomslips.com and see what you can uh, put in your survival pack because this is what we're here for, to help everything happen in an easier way than what we might be facing, <laughs> Oh, Molson. Yes, yes, yes. That, was, that would be a good suggestion, I guess. Uh, well, and he doesn't get the full hundred because he bought the seeds, etc. He's put a lot of work into that because we'd really like straight donations as well, but heck, it's spring. We got to start figuring out how we can take care of ourselves because the things outside of us sure aren't doing it for us. Oh, yes. That's, uh, that's the part of sur survivalism, I guess, on this planet that, uh, you know, if People would cooperate all together and understand the needs of other and collective and all that stuff. Yeah, but the food I grow I know has my love in it. And then mm. when I share it, people get that love too. And it's just a good, better, a roundabout way than going and buying a can that I have no idea where the beans are from or how they got prepared or whose attitude was doing the machine work. Because it all counts. Yeah, and, and the, most importantly, what's in it? <laughs> well, that too. Well, but I mean, but no matter what gets manifested, there is intent. And no matter what item it is, there's still that remnants of resin through that intent on that item. And that's why some people can telepathically or kinetically pick up energies off of items. 
because everything has its story. And so do we, you know. No, definitely everything, uh, you know, especially any any food products or anything like that, and even plants or whatever you think of, they have their own energies. There's no question about it. It mm-hmm. is it is it is stored within the system, and uh, you know um, those energies are there, and they manifest themselves back so that there's no question i agree with you 100 percent there well and they're not questioning it they're just living off their genet- genetic makeup and trying to survive because their intent is the will to live and it's right. the same with the animals except they have other intuitions because they're a higher state of consciousness <laughs> anyway <laughs> let, let's go back to what we were saying you said well, that thought Go ahead. You were, ta- you were talking about the uh, people who perished in the uh, right. earthquake. What and some would think is a disaster, but it just is. It, a, it is a actually rough occurrence. It is actually a part of cleaning and cleansing. Uh, it may not sound, you know, for those people who are over emotional about these things or. You right. know, obviously, obviously, with the families who just lost their people and stuff, obviously, it's going to be a sensitive issue. So it's just kind of, the, you know, I want to say that with that, you know, that it's discerned with the kind of a grain of salt, you know. Mm-hmm. But but here's what it is. You see, first of all, this is what Lord Metatron also says. That it says, look, the hurricanes and earthquakes and things like this. Some of them. Are the, you know they're there to to happen. They're supposed to happen. It is part of the cleansing of the earth, okay? right? Reconditioning, <laughs> and and it is usually leads to rejuvenation. It's not a, a destruction or annihilation. The problem with us is that on this planet we've come in here, and it is not our planet per se, right? That we own the real estate, you know. Although it's our home, it's, uh, although it's openly sold as you know with deeds and things like this, and it, none of that is kosher. So basically, what it is is that we 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 demand that this is my real estate, this is my property, or whatever. And then when something like a flood or hurricane or this this happens, you know we we feel cheated or whatever. But that's not the case. The case is that it is not the real estate does not belong to you. You share this this planet with a group of people who are all part of the uh, Gaia's oversoul. Okay, and simply when something comes in, you move over. Mm-hmm. You go somewhere else, and you accept and agree with that, and you will prosper. Because you're going to find that you you even had a better place. But when you have all these energies, the fear, especially the energies of anxiety. Well, misguided conceptions of that somebody taught you something that was truth when it was not. Yeah, and it is part of the, you know, paradigm of uh, existence on this planet. You know, anxiety and fear and people say... Oh, there's a hurricane coming. And, you know, everything that you hear on the television and radio and all this stuff oh, incites fear. None, none of it none of it is benevolent. None of it is, is inspirational. I it's think just, it's uh, time to get the keg and the munchies, man. Hurricane party. I mean, come on, people. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> what, what, uh, what Lord Metatron actually mm-hmm. says about this is the following. That... The more that the more that you have anxiety and fear, the more you are interfering with the energetics right. that that are in place. Mm-hmm. So even if you if you just retract and if you do not have fear and anxiety, actually you're gonna find that that storm or whatever comes in, and it does its job. And it's not devastating, in fact, because there's nothing that comes from God is devastating. It's right. nothing. It is. It's just your own perceptions. No, it's the way. It's the fear factor that that makes you feel insecure. Well, I think it's the not having control. 
well the fear i mean the fear 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 is fear loses everything you know it get it loses you lose discipline you lose uh, control you lose security you 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 lose joy and happiness i mean it's it's, it's the worst thing fear is mm-hmm. the worst thing and so basically if again if we just accept and allow as we've said so many times if we allow those energies to do their own benevolent work there is enough things for us there to to give us prosperity okay now another thing that I want to say just very very actually uh, uh, what is it uh, very sympathetic with what I had a two hour show yesterday is this regarding the solar radiations, solar flares, CMEs, you know, coronal mass ejections, and all this stuff, which leads to ionization, lead, leads to, you know, all this stuff. These are, again, they're benevolent. They're coming here for a purpose. Some of them, they, they're, they're not even meant to hit the planet. The magnetosphere is properly designed and works in harmony with sun, okay? So when these things are coming, actually it turns out that they have a different pole. They have the same pole as the magnetosphere does. And when when that happens, the magnetosphere will dodge it like a bullet. And, the, the you know, the CME that was so horrendous and horrible and would probably... You know, you know, NASA tells you this, the government tells you, so, oh, 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 the grid system is going to fall, there's going to be no electricity, life is going to terminate on Earth, all this nonsense. That's so funny, yeah, because we lived how many centuries without electricity? Exactly, exactly. And the other thing is that, like, here's, here's what my take on that is, okay? Mm-hmm. First of all, those energies come in here because they are encoded with certain intent to do certain things, okay? So if they come in, even hit the magnetosphere and get propagated all around the envelope of the magnetosphere and then they start getting absorbed into the tectonic plates of Earth or whatever, they're doing something. And I'll tell you exactly what they're doing right now. They are changing the frequency of the planet. They're increasing the frequency of the planet and the waters and everything like that. Okay, and it's meant to be, and it does the cl- cleansing that it's supposed to do, and it does the upshift in the frequency of the of the planet that it does. Okay. Now, the the thing is that you know, if ever, first of all, I don't think any of those are going to be devastating to the human life as long as the planet is supposed to continue on. And supposed to, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Accommodate life on 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 it when we're talking about Gaia, okay? Mm-hmm. So if it comes to a situation, and we will come. According to uh, uh, Lord Metatron, we have a maximum of three hundred years. And what's going to happen if that's going to hit and devastate everything? All right. First of all, this internal grid that you're talking about, Mm -hmm. the electric grid, isn't nothing. It's rubbish. We already have a very sophisticated crystal electric grid system in place that we just have not... Yeah, we've been told to look away from, right. Oh, and we we have to look into it because, look, it it existed at the time of uh, pre-Atlantis, okay, and leading up to the uh, you know peak of Atlantis time, which actually changed the grid into the firmament, all right. But even when the grid system was there, there was satellite, and it 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 had the energy. All these pyramids that you see mm-hmm. all around the the the, the, the world, uh, you think they're they're uh, coincidental? No. None of them are coincidental. They are absolutely lined up. You know, according to the sun and the cosmic 
uh, events in the sol, you know, solstice and summer and whatever, winter solstice and, and equinoxes and all that stuff. And they all had a function. And in fact, if you go even to the pyramids of Giza, you will find there are, there are some windows in there, some things in there. There are some passageways, you know, that they looked into it. All it does, it directs the light to come in and they are basically what they are, they're power plants. And they would transmit from one to the other. For example, the pyramid of Giza is in line at 51.5 degrees, I believe, uh, with the pyramids that existed in Galveston in, in, in Texas, which they were rebuilt actually at the end of the turn of century, last century. And so... Anyway, what it is, it distributes the light all over. And these are some of the things actually I did not talk about in my, my, uh, you know, I should probably write another paper that's more, more into the uh, history of the earth and all that stuff. But anyway, so what it is, it is benevolent. It has to do something. And even if the grid system goes down, there are two possibilities. One, humanity is not to survive on the planet anymore which is not the end of the life as we say it's the end of this reincarnation because you're going to go somewhere else you know Mm -hmm. or if we are supposed because see these people have no belief true belief in god their divinity and all this stuff yeah they're really pushing the envelope too hard though yeah and they're they're just so scared that they think if they're going to die that's it that's the end of everything Oh, well, that's a whole different um, structure. Yes, you're right. But I think if the power went down, most, and that a lot of our true vibrations that have been supposed to be coming in with the solar rays and the grand cross, we'd be seeing, like the Hopi said, the other dimensions intermingling on this one. And that's true fear. All the fear they have now is such an illusion. Now, how about things that you don't, you never would have thought that could happen that are happening. Death is I, inevitable. It's part of life. How can you be in such fear of that change? It keeps you from being alive. Well, fear is futile. <laughs> when we've said that. You know, we've said that over and over. But the thing is that what you were saying, that these people are afraid of the dimensions opening and all this stuff, it already has happened. Maybe they, they weren't privy to see it, or maybe they weren't there to see it. First of all, here's what's happened. Here's what's happening. The dem- we've been to the fourth dimension and beyond, okay? Mm-hmm. And Earth is actually, uh, you know, I mean, the, the Terra Nova is already in the ninth and above dimension. And it's pretty soon it's going to hit the 12th, 12 dimensions. This planet Earth, which is the grounded three dimension at this point, even has opened portals Quite often, we've had, you know, light beings such as jellyfish, uh, elves, and sprites, and things like that. They mm-hmm. have been ordinary people with an ordinary video camera who have gone on the planes around their house, in the backyards, into the woods, and they have, uh, you know, Witnessed I saw... It. Mm-hmm. Yes, I know. I saw st- some video on the on the thing that there's no way they could have faked it because if they could right. have faked it, I could have. No, they were there were orbs. There were light beings. Yeah, I got these, a whole album of orbs. Yeah, and it's not just orbs. It's a it, they're <clears throat> light beings, as mm-hmm. sprites and elves and, and all this stuff. That these do not have a carbon based. Uh, exactly, they're etheric. Like we are. No, they can even be physical. They can manifest in physical, but it's in light, in photons. Yeah, they have okay. a little people around here. So these <laughs> things have happened, and I'm going to tell you something. I want to draw your attention to something. A National Science Foundation themselves spent a tremendous amount of money, and they have subsidized Duke University, who did extensive work on these light beings and unusual happenings in the sky okay. there are videos that they documented that they that they saw jellyfish sprites and they're just like big huge kind of 
um, uh, marine mammals or whatever you can think of that they are roaming about. And, of course, that's when the dimension opens. And if they're in the fifth, sixth, tenth dimension, they appear. And then the gateway closes. And then, you know, but there has been enough of that happening that they're documented. Now, this is mm. not this is not just some... Hearsay, uh, right. Hearsay. I'm talking at National, National Science Foundation. I'm talking about Duke University research. And also... NASA knows about these things forever. They right. have know they have known about these light beings in the sky and beyond Earth, and they have they have documented them. There are on the, but they're just keeping the information from people because they don't want anything that's beyond that slavery <laughs> slavery exactly three dimensional base mm -hmm. fear survivability we are alone all this nonsense you know right. what i'm saying yes i do but there is a <laughs> lot of stuff is going on and so going back to that thing is that even if the grid system falls first of all mm -hmm. who says that you're not going to survive because as you said yourself we survived for centuries in fact the whole purpose listen to me the whole purpose that we have advanced so drastically, mm -hmm. first of all in the 20th century and partly 21st, and also to a certain extent in the uh, you know, 19th century, is because we were supposed to understand ourselves because in consciousness we were so low mm -hmm. that we could never possibly understand you know, I mean, look at my first, the second video. It's about consciousness and light. Mm -hmm. How light gives you consciousness. And I have uh, introduced, uh, you know, terminologies such as discrete consciousness and continuous consciousness. And discrete consciousness basically says you live in a movie. That's basically what it says. Mm -hmm. You live frame by frame by frame. But it happens so fast. Right, Remember right, Remember we talking right. about the 10 to the minus 43 seconds? Exactly. So you, can, you cannot discern that, mm -hmm. but that's how you live. So they gave you the, the advent of uh, uh, animation. Then they went to movies, movie theater, movies, basically. Then they gave you television. They gave you laser light. And they've given you so many things to try to for you to be able to computers. Well, just the, the radio. Radio? Exactly. Because you are a radio right there talking to me yourself. Mm -hmm. Because you're transmitting and you're receiving to the entire cosmos. We just have different firewalls. <laughs> it's, 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 the firewall and I don't is do just, many cookies. <laughs> Yeah, the firewalls is <laughs> the firewalls is something that you have put yourself in there through intent right. and you know all that. So well, it's an accepting and allowance, and you know we can't even really judge anything if it's good or bad, right or wrong, because then we assume we know more than what creation is. And I'm not going there. And you are part of the creation. Well, you yeah. are. You are a creator. You mm -hmm. are yourself. Exactly. Certainly, Programmer. <laughs> certainly you create your reality on this planet. And you are <laughs> part of a much, much bigger force that create, has created everything. You have mm -hmm. a higher self. And by the way, going back to this, again, to the subject of, uh, you know, the minds of those people in the earthquake. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's actually, I was thinking that you said, and actually try to uh, you know you know understand this myself better what what it is is that if you're going to ascend you are going to have to be able to operate under the t that type of frequency that you're going to if you go into the fifth dimension the frequencies are much higher you need a different body structure so you can't have a carbon based that's why you're going to have a silicon based okay mm -hmm. you're going to have a much much more uh clearer like, <laughs> exactly you're going to be clearer you're going to be lighter 
mm-hmm. less dense, and you're going to have also a higher light quotient that you can absorb the light and you can you can work with the light much much more effectively so you're going to have to die in here but at the same time you have to increase your frequencies because when when you base so to speak die which you don't die when you when you transfer from here or uh, pass on you you're still at that frequency okay so then after that you're part of a higher self there are two pos- possibilities one thing is that your higher self calls you in and and you 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 basically join your higher self which means you have to give up your personality that you have developed so far and i'm going to tell you something i don't think that happens because once you have higher self and you split into the lower selves 12 of them or one or whatever in the third dimension, you remain in the third dimension until you pull yourself up to the fifth and higher dimension. Because that's the part of the hierarchy that the, this consciousness consciousness works. Mm-hmm. That is why you've got Lord Metatron and you've got Archangel Metatron and you've got Thoth and you have Mother Sakhme and you got this and you got that and that and that and that. Otherwise, we have one Lord Metatron. You know what I'm saying? So basically, when when those things are, you know, separated, segmented into a, in its own consciousness, it has its own free will, and it, it's going to have to take care of itself. So basically, you have to change your frequency if you're going to go to the higher dimension. If you're going to ascend, you cannot just die. And those people who ascended, and there are many of them, mm-hmm. Saint Germain and this and that. They actually, they raise their frequency one exactly. at a time, one at a time, and they weren't helped by this, this divine lights that have been bombarding us since 1989, basically, actually after 87, but 89 it started accelerating. Okay, they they did it through meditation and self reflection. Buddha did that. Buddha was a was a no, was a just a, actually it was a very it was a prince, very very rich, very very had everything in life, and and you know on this physicality and and then he gave everything up and then he went and sat under a tree and he he did it through self reflection until he really reached deep down to to his higher self and and then you know through spirituality finally ascended, okay, and ascended and ascended. And there are many, many examples of this. All these ascended masters that you see that this, they did it the hard way. You've got to do it that way. It doesn't happen. We are lucky we're privy to do this fast because it's been ordained that, hey, too much on earth as living in duality. You guys have to go higher up. The whole cosmos is changing. The frequency of the solar system is changing. The planet Earth is changing. And with it, all the constituent part of the Earth, which were basically part of the o- souls of the oversoul Gaia, you know? Mm-hmm. We are going to change. So, you know. Well, actually, we're going to take a break. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thanks. That's our signal to go to the donate button and to center yourself and to give thanks that whatever you have around you is what you are creating it to be. May we all be blessed. And yes, uh, welcome to freedomslips.com, adventures of a feral hippie, 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 and revolution radio. <laughs> all righty, Mosin. Yes, ma'am. I'm sure you remembered what the heck we was talking about. Most men do for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't uh, hold on to things. I'm not a good debater. <laughs> I, I think I think whatever we we did talk about came to a 
a good ending because uh, usually otherwise I I I I am compelled to to complete this you know the conversation. Mm-hmm. So um uh, yeah, I think I think we're resolved. Well, ascension will be what we believe it to be. If we have a certain set that we go follow, like you said, the Buddha or whichever, and that might be who helps try to transverse us to another side, because it will be a rude un or awakening. <laughs> you know what? What actually really, you know, is disappointing. You know, what? <laughs> Yeah, it's what's what's disappointing to me is that you know Buddha came in here, uh-huh. and he was magnificent, and he he ascended in, and he is he is an icon. Okay? All the and good people that came to make a difference were radicals. Isn't that kind of funny? Well, they they had the. <laughs> I mean, had think about purpose, it. He walked you know, away supposedly purpose, you know? from riches, and he saw everybody oh, yeah. was being gluttonous in his village, and you know, I like the stories of each one finding themselves. I think that's the true parable to all of it. Well, you know, Mona, if you want to see that on a very very small scale, and I'm no Buddha, okay, but I left the university when I was successful, when things were going well. Because, because I felt like I have to do something else, and I didn't like what was going on. Prior to that, I actually when I changed, uh, you know, my area. I mean, I was almost. I told you I was always done with the PhD in structural engineering, mm-hmm. and I felt compelled that, that I have to go into continuum mechanics and mathematical modeling and crystalline I ended up in crystalline uh, materials and solids and all that stuff and and I said everything was up for a purpose you know what I'm saying so it's it is not always you know money and riches and all this stuff really don't mean anything it's (laughs) never ever ever meant anything to me and when I, at the time that, you know, we were successful and, and you know, e- even out of boredom, if we, we indulged ourselves in something, you know, there are things that I indulged myself on. I haven't even opened the package yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're sitting there. So, you know, I mean, I mean, some of them are, you know, gifts and things like this. My wife was extremely extravagant. Okay. And I used to actually fight with her I said look I don't need such an expensive thing why do I have to that but she did it because she was successful and she wanted to show her love to me and she was generous and all this stuff but anyway what I'm trying to tell you is that you know those riches and stuff is really does not fulfill you inside but I tell you something if you've got something inside if you have that that longing, that churning, that there is something you need to do or achieve or be, that doesn't go away. And that, that will, that will, and, and unless you really uh, sabotage yourself through physical, uh, you know, mind state, you know, which is your physical consciousness, your brain, okay? And... Uh, uh, you, you know, you you will you will go there and you will do it and you will achieve. I mean, you know, right now, you know, I, I lost my wife last year, and you know, I'm well off. And you know, a lot of people w- would want probably to do certain things and indulge themselves. Well, I'm six, I'm not even sixty years old, and that it doesn't make me happy. And I write three papers in in a week, and I get nothing for it. You know, in terms of, I get everything for it from my personal feeling and satisfaction, which is the most important thing. That is everything. But in terms of that, what? I post it on Facebook. Once in a while, a smart ass comes and says something in there. That's luckily one, one in thousands or tens of thousands. Th- certainly thousands. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I had, I had another troll that, uh, you know, in, in one of the group last week 
said something about that I, you know, I appeal to, uh, what is it, uh, what, how did he put it? Like, uh, it's the fad, and that's, uh, the work that I'm doing is a work of a fad, for God's sake. I'm and not. then, and then, <laughs> no, listen, I mean, go and read one of those before you even talk. Mm-hmm. And see what you can do, and what you will do, and how you ca- it can be done, and then then it says, oh, and yes, by the way, he's got a book to sell. I mean, four years ago when I wrote two books, I had one ad, not you know, one announcement in the old website, which I always remember, discourage people to go to that website. It's a website that I have no no uh, control over it because my secretary had the password and everything, and I've got to go and talk to those people and plead with them so I can get into that website and change things or whatever. The website has been dormant basically since 2012, mm-hmm. not even 13. If if that early 13, because that's when I when I when you know my I had I had the secretary. Oh. That's what transition is for, and that's why part of uh, ascension is too. Is that everything is just in a process? Yeah, but listen to this. This guy goes in there, mm-hmm. and he googles my name, and then he drops himself into that that multidimensional consciousness dot tripod dot com, and there's several hundred papers in there. So there's it's been very, you know, it's been cited here and there, and all this stuff. You'll find traces of that all over the the internet and stuff. But anyway, he's gone there. He's seen that thing. And now he says, oh, and he has a book to sell. Well, I don't have a book to sell. Those books are gone. There's nothing in print. I haven't started writing my new books. And a lot of people in my shoes, they would have done that. But I put the, the papers and freely... But why would people have such a dilemma to not give people their graciousnesses of what they've earned? You tell me this. I mean, look at the whole... You tell me this, honey. You tell me this. I I mean, I just did, kind of. You know, but... (laughs) That's that's what it's known, actually. I learned that through my children in the the internet, uh, you know, vernacular or vocabulary. They call that a troll. Well, the more dish you get means the more you're getting out there. But why? Why is this person? Well, because you know, you're reaching nerves. Stuff. They don't want people no. to grow, Mosin. Come on, they want them all dumbed down and still stupid. But this is what he's <laughs> doing to himself. I don't know who this person is. I want you know. Uh, know. you can't make anything out of it because but, S happens, you know. Oh, S happens, and that's what I'm telling you. That <laughs> this is consistent with what we're saying. That these are the people that they need to upship their their frequency and consciousness. So they and can this, only get access as if you bless them for the stupidity that they bestowed upon you. I mean, because yeah, otherwise... Almost, yeah, I mean, this person takes absolutely... allows nothing to grow. Okay? So go and read something. And for that one, I have hundreds of other people who comment and say thank you thank mm-hmm. you for sharing this that 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 so you know it, it is not a personal issue to me it is an yes. issue that this planet is undergoing because well that's the gluttony part again that people think that they should have it all and why they get then to the jealous part because they're not able to have that frequency but and then what? it goes on and but on what? honey why I'm not going there <laughs> Flashing a Ferrari in a because we live in a fractal universe of many emotions this. and energies. That's why. What is there? <laughs> absolutely. What is there to compete? I'm not competing with anybody. I am giving it out freely. I am oh. doing it with full compassion and and and, oh. and unconditional love. Can't let I it get am, you, Mosin. No, but honey, you don't <laughs> no, you don't realize what I'm saying. I I'm do realize you, what you're saying. You're serving in your you, ability and you're doing it graciously without concern because you're not asking for payment. You're not asking for recognition. Exactly, honey. And it's not about me per se. It is not about even him per se. It is it is about existence of such 
a virus, I would call. Yeah, well, that's an understatement. You're correct. <laughs> because, you know, if there was the slightest thing, I mean, he goes there, drags out a fourth thing, page, thing in there, talk about a book that's not even in print. Mm-hmm. And I am not asking, do you, have you ever seen any advertisement from me anywhere about book or anything whatsoever? No, and I wouldn't mind if you did. I mean, you know, hey, no, it's, I haven't done that. it's all so, tools, isn't it? Just again. And three, uh, you know. <laughs> You know, putting. Let me tell you something. Writing uh. one solid paper of the of you know the type of work that I do, it really takes about a week to do one paper. Okay, if you want to do it right, we're doing oh, the. I old don't doubt it. Games. Yeah, I did three of them last year, last week. And and because you know in anticipation of that show, and I said I'm going to give them all. You know, give it all, and all this stuff, hours and hours of work in here. Right. Know? So how can a person – it is, to me, it is as bizarre <laughs> as, as a person who's helpless and sitting there and, uh, you know, maybe an animal that you see that has a broken – a bird that has a broken wing and you pass by and you kick it to oblivion. Well, I wouldn't do where that. The, where but... are these things? But where are these things? These kind of energies even come? They come from, from the opposite of the blessed ones. You got to have the damned equal to the blessed. I mean, doesn't mean you got to feed into it because that's our free will of choice. But yeah. uh, no, well, unfortunately, they do exist, and some people do feed in. Again, I'm saying if there's a slight question for debate. Mm-hmm. I will give that person all the credit and said, okay, he's confused about this, he thinks this, he does that, he does that. This person obviously looked through me because finding my old website is one of the last things you want to do. There's so much new stuff Mm -hmm. all over the internet. Then why are you going to an old website that nothing has got published since 2012 or 13? Do you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But that becomes the issue. And then everything else is, is just totally annihilated in their mind, evaporated. And why live <laughs> with such horrible, ugly energies? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I totally agree. I mean, try to learn something. Read my paper. Come there and say, I don't agree with it. Still, I think it's noble. Because you read the paper, you thought, you self-reflected, you came up with a new idea, you said something. Mm -hmm. Nobody says you're right, but you know what I'm saying? There is no right or wrong. At least you are doing something in there. That is something that's not right or wrong. But this, in my opinion, is totally wrong. You know, so anyway, unfortunately, we we have to do this. As you said, I don't know. I you know, I've tried to understand these people because if you say it's competition, why? Who's competing with them? If you say it's jealousy, why? Who's again competing with them? If if you say, I mean, there is nothing. If you know, if somebody comes in, I, I've had some people who are kind of like trolls, kids, years before, way before. I haven't had them for a long time. But if I put something in a group, they came in there and they basically said that I'm a pseudoscientist. That was their fame to glory. Because mm-hmm. you got an 18 year old, 19 year old who just took his first course in a in a community college in shit city nowhere town. Right. Okay. And thinks that he is just fant- I understand his energies. And then I, I, I said, that's okay. That's as a child, just the way you looked at your children and you allowed and you let them to just make their mistakes. That's all fine. That's mm-hmm. all fine. And then he says, I'm a pseudos. Okay, so that's arrogance. That's he's just, he thinks he's taking. And I went back and looked at him so because I try to understand these things. This is part of what I do. Right. Understand. Humanity, cosmos, con- consciousness, energies, all this stuff. And that's the only reason I do that. So that's no personal thing in it. And then I went there and I – in fact, when I see something that personality is crap, I just let it go because I already know what it is. Mm-hmm. It does, I have the answer for that. But, you know, so initially when these kids – I wanted to know who's saying this, that I'm a pseudoscientist. 
<laughs> How can I be a pseudoscientist? You know, and then and then I went back in there, and I mean, what am I saying? That suicide? Maybe, maybe, maybe I have to look into this. Maybe, and you know, why a person even comes then? What German is them? And then I see, yeah, it's a kid taking his first class in the community college, just enrolled in some science course, all this stuff, arrogant as hell. You go on his Facebook, the pictures are cocky as hell, and all that. Then you understand what's going on. Now when the second and third one comes in, which they did, there were some I got out of those groups. Because they're just absurd. There are some groups out there, Mona. They're useless. They only propagate some of them are anti this and anti that and anti that. That's one sort of negative energy. At least those people talk about harp and this and that and and, and you know, but at least they're they're doing something it's different, but there are some some of these groups who are intellectuals. And by the way, you can tell by the name of the group right now. As soon as I see the name of the group, I can feel their energies right there. Who's going to be inside them there? And mm-hmm. it's not going to be it's not going to be a hundred of all of them, hundred percent of them. But even if it's five percent of them, that's enough for me. I don't want to deal with with it. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. But you know, but these people do not want to learn. You know what I'm saying? To them is some gossip. There are some spiritual stuff, unfortunately, out there that is basically a fad. Mm-hmm. And you know what? And that's why. But why call it a pseudoscience? It's just an alternative perspective to the already known science that they want no, to claim. The kid, the kid doesn't understand. Right. Tesla or Einstein or anybody was. There, he is mm-hmm. way, 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 way in an infantile state of mind and consciousness. Right, right. He even appreciate who those people were and what they did. Mm-hmm. Yet he is totally judgmental. He knows everything now. So you're it thinking is, it's a whole s- generation? No, 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 no. There's oh, isolated. Good. No, there are isolated, but there are. There is. Unfo- See, when you say spiritual, you say God spirituality, divinity, all this stuff, this is all wonderful, and you want everything to be perfect, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm saying that, unfortunately, there are people that are under this, this uh, false sense, uh, under the disguise or the, uh, the you know, uh, umbrella of spirituality. Either they're, go- they're doing that, they're just going there, and they're... they're Pushing buttons. It's like you said, troll. Well, some no, some of them are trolls like that. Forget those. But there's some of them are also, you know, they're just making a living. Mm-hmm. And I had those two. I mean, the, there is a person who comes to my thing and steals a bunch of uh, uh, slides and stuff like that instead of really understanding. And the next time she's posting here and there, that's fine. Mm-hmm. I said, that's, that's good because initially you don't think anything bad. You think it's good. But then later... After a year, year and a half, comes back to you and message you, and on the message, and she's talking about how busy she is, because you know I said something that I disagreed with her, and she said, "Well, she just has no time for me because she's so busy. She's writing a book. She's doing this. She's doing that. She's doing that." Well, I would say, you know what? You know what you can do with your book. Hmm. Because the state of consciousness is low. I mean, the energy is still low. A person who comes in there and, you know, there's some people who just pick a little bit here and there. Right, just out to discredit, right? No, not just to discredit, to just most of the time it's ego thinking they they are something. And they have not understood the subject. They haven't even read the, 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 the slide correctly to understand what I'm really saying. Mm-hmm. And they think they know it. Oh, the world's full of assumptions or assuming or theorizing or whichever. Well, I mean, part, you of know. It, part of it also, I think, is, again, the paradigm of, unfortunately, reality that goes back to that egotism and, and memeism and all memeism. this stuff. Memeism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, unfortunately, you know, and I tell my children always, I said, well, it's going to get better because... The, this frequency of consciousness gets better and better and better, higher and higher, and people appreciate. And I have seen that. 
oh my god, since 2011, since I went on the internet and I started doing these things, okay? Holy God. They, I mean, the appreciation is through the roof that the people, you know, the number of people to come to your sites or the number of people who have themselves. Now, if they do something, I encourage that. If they post, if they have a site, they have that. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as it's a noble attempt not to sell an item and not to sell themselves, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because go and do something else. But there are some people who have found... Well, what we're going to achieve till next week is getting that unconditional love found and no more fear. And thank you, sir, for our April 27th Monday show. Thank you very much. All right, we'll get back at you, sweetheart. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> Have a good one, man. You too. Bye-bye.